scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Years ago, let me tell you this. I, I got to a point in my life, respectfully speaking, when God started lifting me and doors were opening. And until that time, I, in my conservative way, I didn't think that I would need a system to manage my itinerary and all of that. And people would call me and sometimes there could be five, six calls for ministrations, the dates clashing, I may not even remember. I would just tell this person, yes, oh, you are my friend, I will come. Yes, and sometimes I would find out that I had agreed for three ministrations within the same time, not knowing. And the people, I found out that I was damaging useful relationships in my life because now I would say yes to this and find out I said yes to this person. Now, how would I choose? I knew that my failure was a revelation that I had risen to a point in my life where allocating that, be, and then because, you know, starting ministry, most of my ministration was among friends and people who I was building a relationship with. And there were times that there, there are legitimate reasons to say no. But I may not have the courage to say no. So you allow the system to say no for you. you. You see how powerful it is now? There are many things you cannot say no to as an individual. So you leave the no to the system. Most of you have, have carried needless enemies in your life today. Because instead of allowing the system you built to say no, you kept saying no by yourself. You will have too many troubles in your life with people. You will, you, will, you will lose out on many precious relationships if you don't create a system around what you have to do. This is very powerful. Build a code of conduct and a code of operation around your life. Now, I'm going to be listening. This is the final thing we're going to do and then we'll pray. I want to guide you a bit as to the various aspects of our lives. I don't just want to deal with systems and structures arbitrarily, but I want to zoom down on a few things that you can take home. You can know that this is, this is the problem and this is the solution around this area of my life. Let's start with our spiritual lives. Write it down, please. How do I build a system? that maintains my spiritual growth and maintains my spiritual fire. Most of us rise up today and go down tomorrow. We're not able to sustain that spiritual momentum. Do you know why? Because everything that has to do with our spiritual life is based on emotion. Please look at me. How many of you know that if you depend on your emotion to read your Bible, if you depend on your emotion to pray, if you depend on your emotion to go to church, you will not do any of that. Is that true? What is the system you have put in place for your Bible study? What is the system you have put in place for consistent prayer? Anybody who tells you prayer is comfortable and convenient lie to you. Prayer has nothing to do with emotions. You have to create a system that not even your emotions can easily tamper with. Hallelujah. Imagine with me that I come up here on Sunday and I say, ladies and gentlemen, um, 
I know you love me and I love you too, but I want to be very honest with you. Today we are just going to pray in tongues and sing because um, I needed to sleep. I've, I've, I've been traveling around and I'm so tired and I don't have anything to tell you. I thank you for coming here since 10 o'clock in the morning and since 8.30 struggling for space and sitting down and uh, come again. May the Lord bless you. I'm sure that after two or three weeks I'll be prepared. How, how irresponsible will that sound? Now, don't you know that I live a busy schedule? And yes, not even you will excuse me for that carelessness. Why? Because preparing my sermon to make sure God's people are built has been systematized. Are we together now? I don't allow my emotions to prepare sermons. I will fail miserably. There are many meetings that line up before me. And so there are systems, there are time periods where I'm about studying and preparing. Whether there is rain, whether I am tired, I can pamper myself afterwards. But as far as that is concerned, I must be instant in season and out of season. Someone shout amen. amen. Please look up. Our parents, many of us here, our parents and our elderly ones here, used to practice a system called morning devotion is that true now that didn't seem to be a system that um some of them would not pray in tongues for one hour nor finish their bibles cover to cover but notice that every time they woke up the first thing they did their bibles will usually be at the side of the bed is that true and because of that they were in contact with scripture every day for 50 years 41 years now some of us have come as zealous people who love the lord you can pray for eight hours one day and not pray again till after three weeks you can study the bible emotionally trying to finish 15 chapters in one day and then leave your bible alone then repent after two months when you hear a message like this and go back again everybody says systems please look at me you can never become spiritually alive and robust allowing your emotions to define the level of your spiritual commitment do you know why many many people who work in corporations and in the civil service no matter how res respectfully speaking how um, um, how draggy they are they are still able to maintain that because there is a register that you sign in when you come in is that true and they will query you there is a supervisor waiting for you so you can return home by 12 even attend a vigil sometimes end by four or five and as tired as you are you know your salary is at stake your job is at stake there are bills to pay it will fuel the energy you will stand up and bath and be on your way systems are supervisors they supervise compliance you must create a system around your spiritual life. What is the system you are built to make sure you study the Bible every day? And for some of us, when it has to do with Bible study, that is even a discussion for another day. Because you get up and there is no definition as to what you are becoming. Today you just feel like, um, let me read Proverbs. I'm not in the mood for any history. You just open Proverbs chapter 1 and with sleep in your eyes, you'll be reading the same verse for 20 minutes you think you have finished it you will come back read it again because there is no system and then the next day you read john chapter 2 and then when you wake up and stumble across a message online and it fires your spirit you quickly go back to revelation read something small on rapture you don't grow that way your growth is not methodical this is the reason why respectfully speaking we have many people who go to church but there is no growth because people do not grow methodically some of our parents who would read five chapters according to that devotional gradually gradually they may finish their bible in five years six years it may not be so much relative to your passion and your press but it was systematized can i tell you this if you have not outgrown um if you have not outgrown being guided to read a scripture by designing your own structure go back to it in fact i don't have a problem with devotionals they are a healthy start and they can help you of course in truth you will need more than that if you really want to press to certain dimensions but it is it is fair enough for you to start
someone met me and said apostle i need to grow spiritually and i confess that my study of the word and my prayer is not i'm not really benefiting i'm not really growing how can you help me this is what i told the person as a recommendation i said every message that is preached here in koinonia let that be your study for that week at least start from there so you listen to the message and you use it for bible study you use it to build now you settle down and look at the scriptures if you even just focus on what is being taught per week many of us have almost everybody's message in the world you have everybody's devotional but you have not listened to any of them when we go to your library there are books from even generals that are long gone and you will impress us by what is in your library but you've not even read up to one percent of it you will not grow that way say in the name of jesus i obtain grace to maintain my spiritual life by systematizing my approach please look up there are some of you here you cannot pray for one hour every day now the the value of prayer is not in the timing the value of prayer is in the efficiency and the fellowship but then timing is a discipline that can help you believe me when i tell you this some of you don't have the discipline to wake up in the night use an alarm clock an alarm clock is a system Oh, apostle, it's an embarrassment to my discernment. Please use it. Save yourself all this pride for nothing and get a good alarm clock. If you plan to wake up by 2 o'clock, let it start by 1.30. So you can struggle for 30 minutes. Whatever it is, you can be sure that by 2 you are awake. It's a strategy. Can I tell you this? The days that are coming will depend on your spiritual health. Man of God, the ministry that you run cannot rise beyond your spiritual health. That is the truth. Koinonia, if my prayer life is just one hour, you will not grow. I assure you, at this level of my life, it's not pride. If I pray for only one hour, praying for you, what God has done, will I finish saying thank you in one hour? There are many homes here that don't, that don't have a system for their spiritual upkeep. Respectfully speaking, don't feel bad. We're dealing with systems and structures. Anybody who feels like praying in the house just calls for prayer and then everybody just respects it. You can't grow that way. The home needs to have a system, whether it's in the morning or night or both, so that any visitor who comes to stay with you meets an existing system so people don't ship in babylon to your house and come and destroy your home when they come and meet a system they will respect it in this house by six o'clock we wake up well in my father's house i wake up by nine i respect you but you may have to comply with what is available now six o'clock let's begin to pray father we thank you and everybody is praying in the house how about bible studies I'm sorry to say it, but did you know that many children do not learn about God from home? They don't build character from home because there is no system for that. Our society continues to be destroyed today because we are hoping that religious, educational and governmental institutions will do the work that family should start. No systems. The reason why you are well nourished is because there is a system subconsciously you know that there will be breakfast lunch and dinner for some of us who fast you look at your loved ones those days when when we really started learning the things about fasting in the seminary we would they would combine the breakfast and lunch nobody eats it just because you are fasting length period will come and go but by night that revenge mission the breakfast in the morning and the lunch and dinner if anybody touches your breakfast or your lunch because you are spending time with God, when you are back from that mountain, you will now flog it out with them. Some of you are like that. They go to the kitchen, whose food is this? It's my own, leave it there, I'm fasting. <laughs> Even the gifts that visitors bring, the yam, the fruits, leave it there. Once it's 5 30, as you are praying in tongues, you are strolling around the kitchen six on the dot hallelujah now look at me please 
look at me how many of you here have a system for your renewal with god most of you do not have a system for retreats you don't even know what retreats are respectfully speaking some of you how can you as a leader even a spiritual leader not have a system of retreat it's not only when you have an attack that you need a retreat out of the seven days in a week what is the strategy you have put in place to make sure your fire is not lost monthly do you have a strategy quarterly do you have a strategy during your birthday what happens i just know that people celebrate me uh-huh spiritually don't you know that that is a defining moment in your life those days in zaria we used to practice it and even train people that your birthdays were very prophetic seasons in your life you will see people go on fasting three days four days to their birthdays they can celebrate only when they've sorted destiny with god but today as simple as that was many people encountered god and found purpose please return return in the name of jesus christ this is not just entertainment many of you this is what started depleting your spiritual life you are a man of god the fire you used to command before was because maybe you were on campus or where you were you were around fellow believers so there was a system of check and balance now that you are alone your prayer life gone down everything gone down is why when most people finish from campuses they become a shadow of themselves you know why because respectfully speaking in campus there are fellowships there is always something to do and there is someone to watch around your life but now you are an administrator now you are doing some other things everybody says systems you must create a system for bible study this night whether it's a topical study whether it's study book by book whether it's through the use of devotional make up your mind don't wait and say apostle why don't you do it and be giving us every day go and i'm teaching you here so that you will go and find it and study don't stay on to be over pampered like that you have to take responsibility spiritually number two what is the system you have put in place for your mental development what is mental development correcting and building superior beliefs what is the system you have put in place to give you a superior philosophy about life i've told you every day without fail and i stand before god and before his people there are teachings i listen to there are people whose thoughts shape my understanding and it is a non-negotiable sacrifice i must listen every day How are you going to rise and become a marvelous tool that God will use when you are not agreeing with him mentally? There is Bible on tape. There is Bible on MP3. Is that true? There are many ways you can manage. I have, I have this, this, the words of Jesus only. I have it on MP3. On almost all my flash drives my phone laptop everything I have it there so sometimes I can just be playing it the words of Jesus only because these are the words that shape my mind and my understanding the destiny of millions depend on my efficiency I cannot afford to be careless those days we used to sleep with worship songs to confess to you now we don't do so much of that but those days it used to be worship songs from night till morning worship songs playing so it was a system to maintain your spiritual life you wake up in the middle of the night with such intense presence this is how god built us oh please return to it please return to it in the name of jesus christ submit to mental development get up and look for people whose philosophies are word compliant there are people living in the personal development industry whose, whose thoughts are word compliant. Listen to it to adjust your philosophy about life. Don't depend on the low level thinking. You can't be global that way. Number three, you must build a system to manage your health and your wellness. This is a very powerful one. There are homes today, respectfully speaking, who, who do not have any kind of first aid structure 
God forbid, should anything happen to someone in that house, even if it is Panadol that is needed, someone will have to book an Uber. It is carelessness. I am sorry, but just, just receive it from me this night. It's carelessness. There must be a provision in place. Do you know, you are given only one body per lifetime. I have taught you, maintaining it is your responsibility. And you must create a system around it. You must create a system on how to access rich food, vitamins and supplements if you want to, and then scriptures for your health. I have scriptures. You know, several men of God across the body have done several beautiful scriptures that speak about your health and your wellness. I listen to it every time because I intend to live long. And Jesus said we live by bread and by words. Hallelujah. I made up my mind one time that I was going to, you know, I was going to build a, a gym just for fitness. And um, <laughs> don't laugh. You've not even heard the story. You people make me always look like a, I'm a comedian. Listen, do you know that I now said they should look for a gym instructor, a coach for me? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, they went and brought one fine young man who really respects and honors me. I was inside when they said he had arrived. I said, okay, let him just go to the gym and wait for me there. When he went there and I saw the guy, I said, did I tell you people I want to box and learn? This guy was built and looking like he could pick me. I said, what is he here for? To build me? No. It is such as you have that you give. I'm not interested. No, no way. That's not my assignment. It's not in the blueprint of my destiny. My assignment is just to be healthy. Any other thing greater than my strength, I depend on the Holy Spirit and military people. Thank God he has surrounded me with so many generals, they can help me. Ah, that gentleman was built. He now showed me videos of him doing exercises. He was using chains. Chains. Hallelujah. But the point is this. Look at me. If you don't take care of your health, you will die. I'm not confessing negatively. Believe me when I tell you, if you don't take care of your health, is there a system in place? Apostle, I collect 200,000 naira per month. You can discuss and allocate something for healthy living. It is true. It's a discipline we must learn in the body of Christ. Don't allow taking care of your health be an emotional thing. The day the pain becomes overbearing. Some of you, you live in pain every day. You are used to it. And these are signs that continue in your body for 10 years. Medical science will tell us that most conditions that destroy people can be managed if you were dealt with in its infancy. Do you agree with me on that? Hallelujah. I'm a man of faith. Oh, I'm a man of the spirit. But the Bible says wisdom is profitable to direct. I need to live long for the sake of the assignment. We are not afraid of death, but we know that we need to live long to finish that which God has given to us. Are we together? I'm saying this thing so that you will go back home. Don't just say, I attended Koinonia and I laughed. No, go back and sit down. For some of you, you may start this. You need to start putting a good system to have clean drinking water in your house. You are too blessed to be taking the kind of water you are taking. It's pure carelessness. It's just that you've not paid attention to it. What system have you put in place to excel in your work? Your work here means your career, your business, and your ministry. Man of God, what system have you put in place to meet with your leaders and train your leaders and train your workers and help them love God? Do you know it is dangerous? And there are several people here who are preachers. It is dangerous to be a man of God on fire and then not know what is happening to your leaders. You don't even know what is happening to your leaders. They are just there. You don't know whether they pray. You don't know whether they fast. You don't know whether they love God. You just know that anytime you give them an assignment, they do it. It's a risk. It's a risk to you and to that vision. 
continuous development do you have a system for buying good clothes do you have a system for your presentation i'm being very simple with you but it is true be very systemic around your life there are some of you by reason of what you do you can't be dressing in certain ways and say it does not matter those who bless you know how much they are giving you and the way you are dressing does not justify their sacrifice on your life there are some of you right now if god leads me to bless you and i say who is your tailor you say well it depends last week it was one i just found somebody new you don't have anything like that it's terrible how then can favor become consistent in your life system who cleans your house i just call people are you free or oh, yeah come and clean my parlor today what is there with getting someone with as little as 30 50 000 naira for most of you especially because god has helped you why allow your house to be so dirty and unkept you drive prospective friends and business people in your house and you have the money to keep that house clean you can't be sweeping it every day by reason of what you do why don't you create a system your house is not too small to have a staff structure of two three people give them an orientation you are welcome to this house this is how things happen here run this house as family this is your job description do this very well when visitors come this is how to greet them this is what you serve them if they ask any question beyond you this is what to do systems you save yourself embarrassment just by having systems for many of us it's not lack of money is that our life is not systemic enough to attract our next level to us there is too much freelancing of things are we together a visitor comes to your house and he needs a bottle of water and there is nobody in the house who can go and bring the bottle of water it shouldn't be What are the systems that you have put in place? Now, this is a very serious thing. What are the systems in place you have, you have put for family life? Training your children, spending time with your spouse, bills, welfare that have to do with the home. These are very serious things. For many of us, respectfully speaking, there is no system to raise the children God has given you. They just keep growing in your house. If they are fortunate to find good friends or a good school to raise them, save Johnny. If it's unfortunate for them and they find bad friends, save Johnny. For some of us, respectfully speaking, our children can be becoming, you know, all kinds of bad, bad, you know, decadence in the house. And yet we don't know. We are busy making money. We are busy doing several things and there is no system. That was the mistake of Eli. Go and read your Bible, you see the story of Eli. He was a great man. Eli was sincere, but he was careless over Hophni and Phinehas, his sons. And as a result, it led to his own death. Your children will not kill you. In the name of Jesus. Family life. It's very important. What about your finances? What is the system you have in place for budgeting? There are some of us today, respectfully speaking, with what you are earning per month, in all fairness and in all sincerity, you may not be earning the whole world, but there are certain needs you should not have if there were a system in your life. That some of you still go to borrow money and beg from certain people who are by far less earners than you, simply because their life is more systematized. There are certain kinds of birthdays you should not be doing, not with the kind of money you are earning. No, you are not yet there. There are certain kinds of, respectfully speaking, society living that should not be, not with the kind of money you are earning. As God lifts you, you can adjust your lifestyle to suit the growth, but the pressure of society. There are people who can go to a restaurant and millionaires are spending 100, 200,000 because their businesses will return back that money that night. But you who, even if it's favor that came to you, favor is maintained by wisdom. You also join and, and spend 200,000 naira that night and you go back, they are sleeping and you cannot sleep. 
hallelujah look up how about ministries there are ministries that may not have the budget to be doing certain things they are doing respectfully speaking this is with love to the body of christ for many years in this ministry we limited the things that we did because of the future and we knew that there will be times for capital projects and serious finances will be needed but there will be need for management to cut away excesses and thank god for that wisdom today at the level he has brought there is nothing we want to do that we cannot do it didn't just happen by favor alone through wisdom a house is built is someone learning now there are people today when you see them you will think they have estates but in truth they do not have a single house of their own why they have been earning a lot of money i'm a giver but let me teach you the truth even giving must be guarded with discretion and wisdom just because god mandates that we give does not mean we should be careless some of you are emotional givers it's not just revelation somebody god can provide you one million naira and maybe in your state or your area it can buy even if it's a plot of land and you can just sit in church hearing me preach now and say this man kai and you carry the one million now if god led you no problem but that you just stand up emotionally do you know there are people who have given to this ministry and called the finance department sincerely i'm not mocking them later on that they made mistakes and please is there a way i mean it i'm not joking for some of you when when they call maybe in your various assemblies or in any meeting they call for a vow or they call for giving you see your colleagues and your contemporaries come out and out of sheer carnality and pressure not the leadership of the spirit how many of you can give 10 10 million here and what the holy ghost is restraining us mm -mm. you are owing you are still paying you have not paid your children's school fees now i'm a giver i've taught you giving there are many people today who even run away from churches because they vowed vows that they cannot pay you went to three churches and pledged 10 10 million and all the men of god know you you are running away your children are running away it was needless systems most people don't prepare their offering before they come to church it is when they see the person who is who is a package or tithes and offerings they just check and look at everything that's why you are not growing financially this is the balance you can't give god peanuts and check what is here one thousand you return it back 500 you return it back 100 naira you return it back 15 naira you return it back then you carry the bad one and just squeeze it and drop and then you are laughing and god is saying i'm seeing your heart you ate in a restaurant before coming to church you spent ten thousand, and you came and dropped 15 naira i don't mean to be a bearer of bad news but you will not grow that way where your heart is there your treasure will be how about a system for savings do you know why pension scheme works aside from corruption and other things do you know why it works i will tell you because there is an automatic system to, de to deduct from your salary is that true all through your lifetime if they gave you all the money and say be depositing it yourself only one percent of the people who receive pension today will have it they know that there is a limitation in all men so they created a system out of it so that after 35 years of service out of that maybe added to it maybe you haven't put it in some investment account with the little gain there, they can now be blessing you with it for the rest of your life there must be a system to save some of you if you calculate all that god has brought to your life today january somebody gave you one million for happy new year somebody gave you five million someone gave you two hundred thousand someone gave you three hundred thousand during your birthday you got ten million you have carried like thirty million how much do you have now fifteen thousand it's carelessness Do you have a system in your life for replenishing listen to my financial series do you have a system in your life 
Do you know there are many people who enjoy birthday parties? There are many people who enjoy anniversaries and when it's time for their children's school fees, they literally stand stranded. And do you know why nobody helps them? Because the impression they have given is that I am comfortable. You can't call us for a meeting and spend 30 million and be asking for 500,000 for your child. It does not add up. When people know you are genuinely in need and you demonstrate it by diligence to what God has already given you, people will be very quick to support you. I tell you this. There are times people come to me, respectfully speaking, to ask for help. And I look at them. I look at what they are wearing. I calculate, at least with my mind, look at what this guy is wearing look at the kind of car he came out from and then he stands arrogantly and he says, i don't know somebody said i should come and meet you i don't know and i said no this this man is not worthy of help if you help them maybe just pay to the school and help the children but not because of the person wastage there are people driving cars today that are by far bigger than their levels you have a car respectfully speaking of 50 million 40 million and you don't have a house it's, it's, not, it's not a wise calculation. Everybody says systems. You may not like me this night, but I love you. We will soon pray. You came to church. You should live wiser. Some of you, there are some money that should have come to you. God delayed it until you hear this message. Because if that money had arrived last week, with all the prophecies I've been giving you, God, God has allowed you now because he wants you to now that it comes with this wisdom those friends that used to call you has it come you tell them listen listen to koinonia message part three striving for mastery manage your passion for celebration and some of these excessive things let God build you and you can have to do anything and even give Are we together? How about relationships? What system have you put in place for having and maintaining the various relationships needed in your life? Most of us don't have a system. What is the standard in your life for having friends? Anybody who just smiles at you and says, I like your shoe, or you just meet in a program, suddenly becomes your friend. You call them your covenant friend, bosom friend, until they tear you into pieces after two weeks. You leave them and look for another one. No, there has to be a standard. What is your standard for having friends? I've taught you this about relationships. There are general relationships. There are seasonal relationships. But there are covenant or destiny relationships. There are many of us, you can meet someone for the first time. And in two hours, you've told the person everything about your life. Plus the problem you have with your spouse. The problem that you have with your man of God. The problem you have with your children. And at the end of it, the man laughs. The day you have a problem with that man, he has everything in the palm of his hands. Be wise as serpents, Jesus said, and to be gentle as doves. Is someone getting wiser? Please look at me. There must be a system to manage your relationships. I told you my story. My dear mom, I'm sure she's following, watching now. Years ago, I didn't used to have that time, not intentionally. That time, you know, for my family and all of that, I was busy ministry, justifiably busy. And then we used to gather together 1st of January to pray. And after we finished, you know, AOB and my mother made a statement. I cried that night. My mother said, well, her statement is directed to me. She said, please, sometimes my family members also have issues. They want to see me. They want me to pray for them. And she would not mind that even if it is to tell them what time to be calling me. I said, my mother, this is the person that everybody who says, um, hail king of kings they are the same people who will say crucify you these are some of the people who will stay with you when everybody runs away and i went back and i said god and i made up my mind that i was going to come up with an a system of reaching out and at least doing my best to maintain my relationship with my family member S some of you, you need to do this don't generalize your relationships 
who are the five most important people in your life today by reason of number one the spiritual contribution they bring to your life by reason of number two their their dependability as friends in your life by reason of number three the level and magnitude of their financial commitment to your life don't generalize everybody no it's a mistake that's why i took out time to celebrate my precious workers and I did that sincerely. I have taught you this year. Not everybody thinks you are a big deal. Beloved people of God, when you find people who love you sincerely and believe you are a big deal, don't ignore them. Some of you, by reason of this teaching, you need to come up with a system. Maybe once every week, every two weeks, every month. If I cannot see my loved ones, at least I will send them a text. I will call them. Can I tell you, especially for your parents, whether you like it or not, someday they will not be here again. Don't waste the opportunity being a celebrity around the world to people who only love your gift and not you and forget the people that really matter in your life. It's time to reorder your life and create systems. Let me tell you this sincerely no matter where i travel to in a year no matter what it is if i have to for any reason i will not miss koinonia maybe more than two three times and it has to be a justifiable reason maybe if i travel out and i'm not able to come or maybe i'm doing a conference somewhere that may be the only reason but if it is sunday you will find me here as much as possible the school of ministry i make sure that i am there to teach them by myself is it not me God called? Why did I say yes? If I say yes, I must obtain the grace and stay and be serious. There are some of you here who are men of God. You are losing your core membership in the name of the world celebrating you. They will leave you in a heartbeat the day they find an alternative. The ones who love you enough to come and sit and be part of the vision are deserving of your best. This is true. I learned this from God's servant, Bishop Oedeko, and, so, and many of our fathers of faith in this nation. A few of them have had the privilege of talking with them. Except it is necessary, they will be home. Not out of insecurity. It is their primary assignment. Can I tell you, as much as you see me all around this nation and around the world, believe me, my dear people, you are my primary assignment. And as far as God grants grace, I will not fail in that. I will make sure that week after week, to honor your sacrifice of taking the risk to be part of this vision systems when people know you are that serious about them they will be serious about you too they can now invite people to come knowing that you will not waste their time i have said this human beings are not stupid if they find out that you are not contributing constructive value to their life they may not run away from you but they will look for an alternative that serves them well Please go back and rewrite your relationships again. Who are the people who have shown you the greatest honor in your life? Write it down. The first five. Invest in that relationship. Who are the first five people who you know are shoulders you can lean on? No matter what happens in your tears and in your smiling, they will be there. They are not there for when you are happy. If you tell them today they diagnose me of something, they will say, thank God I'm here. We will die here. We will trust God and release our faith. Don't have those kind of people in your life and push them away in the name of I don't trust anybody. No. I love everybody, but everybody does not occupy the same place in my life as far as relationships is concerned. There are people who have gone out of their way to show me love, honor, kindness, to invest in my life, not just in monetary times, but these are people that if they see me crying today, they will not ask, why are you crying? They will look for a handkerchief first and make sure the crying stops before they say, why are you crying? How could I throw such people out of my life? If you want to strive for mastery, this is what you must understand. That's why you can see a few people, they are never lonely. They are never left alone because they've created systems. Are we together? Have you created a system on giving? There are people who once blessed you, 
who once helped you some of them are aged today some of them don't have the privilege to be as strong as they were when the government have you created a system around your finances to make sure that at least you are reaching out to them you see politicians here have a lesson that they teach us most of them this is what they do they remember people who have been there for them and respectfully speaking even if they are pretending it they do it there so that the rainy days they can the person can remember them you must edge your impact in the minds of people so that when the, the rainy days come they will remember you if you ever see any man excelling in life in ministry in business they systematize their success by helping them to reign helping them to understand what they need to do to reign i have put a system in my life to make sure my prayer life never goes down a system of refueling a system of maintenance a system of retreat if I go on a retreat today, Koinonia should not suffer because I'm going on a retreat. A system has been put in place. Father, have you put a system in your house that if you are caught up in traffic or you are not able to come back home, the school fees of your children will still be paid. Your wife will still be taken care of. Man of God, have you put a system in your church that even when you are not around, the fire on the altar never goes down, that your values become uncompromising? Have you put a system in place? Striving for mastery, part one, the foundation. Part two, the laws of dominion. Part three, the power of systems and structures I have been holding this mic for at least one or two hours now and yet it has failed to stop because there is a system that powers it and for as long as the conditions for that system is in place I can hold this from morning even up till night my goal is for you to become like Jesus in every way first in your character and your stature and then through knowledge and high level illumination that you truly become people of influence and power that God can do much with you witnesses indeed according to John chapter 1 and verse 6 and 7 it says there was a man sent from God his name was John and he says the same came for a witness to bear witness to the light that all men through him might believe every teaching you receive here series after series and there are so many of them lined up every miracle service here every time of counseling every time of prayer every activity in this ministry was designed by the spirit of god and through wisdom to work in synergy to build you to become a certain kind of people my challenge for you tonight is that god desires that you leave the realm of trial and error man of God enough of coming on stage without what to preach and giving flimsy explanations and say you know my schedule is busy enough of amateurism in display or communicating the word it's time to strive towards perfection Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1 as we prepare to pray Hebrews 6 therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ it says let us go on to perfection on to perfection on to perfection a higher level of maturity it's time for people to be able to say I know that if we meet this preacher my life will change why because they know that there is a system around your life yes it is true we are humans but within the boundary of God's grace and principle you can become so exceptional that your life becomes an inspiration even to nations is someone ready to pray more love more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life more love more love 
more love, more power, more power, more you, more of you in my life. Hallelujah. In one minute, as you're standing looking at me, many of you following from across the globe, the Spirit of God is asking you right now, identify the areas of inefficiency in your life. Identify the areas of consistent compromises in your life. Identify the areas of inefficiency swings, highs and lows. For some of you, it's your spiritual growth. You have never maintained an ever increasing consistent spiritual life for one full year. You must backslide somewhere and someone prays for you and you get back. It's time to strive for mastery. There are some of you, your finances, you have never had one year debt free, one year trouble free, one full year that you didn't have to borrow money. You can strive for mastery. For some of you, it's your family life. For some of you, it's the area of your mind. I have discussed a number of areas. For some of you, it's your organization. You have a great organization, but there is no leadership and no management. Every team is haphazard, no predictability. You do not have the structure that can hold the growth you are looking for. It's time to reinvent yourself through wisdom. Some of you, by Monday, tomorrow, you need to go to your place of work gather your staff together no matter how large and how small that store is you are not producing anything tomorrow it's a leadership training ladies and gentlemen i have learned something we have found the key to our inefficiency there are no standards in this place of work you come to work when you want to you don't come when you want to you wear anything you say anything there is no code that governs how we speak we don't have ethics there is no code of conduct there is no code of operation no modus operandi we look like like different people even though we are selling the same product it has to change you have leaders and pastors under you everybody comes to preach what he wants to say that is wrong within the context of that spiritual organization you don't come and carry a mic and say well I'm a pastor in a ministry but I will preach what I like no no you have to be able to walk in keeping with the mandate given to the man of God at least within the time of your service there faithfulness is demanded are you getting what I'm saying now very important have you seen certain corporations that when you meet three different staff they sound like three different people this one says welcome God bless you how are you how can we help you the other one says, hey, how are you and and he's talking and you're saying you were trained by the same person say yes it's time to go back and standardize your results the nations are waiting for you you are a businessman standardize your results you are a man of God standardize your results if they invite you for a healing meeting let it be that healing happens if they invite you for a breakthrough meeting let it be that lives change I vowed a vow to God and I've told you that nobody on earth will ever meet me twice before they are changed But it's not just an empty statement. You must defend it by the fire and the consistency of fanning your spiritual life. You didn't waste your time tonight, I assure you. You came to church to learn something. For some of you, this is the reason why increase has not come. No matter the prophecy, increase will be a waste. There is no structure. I prophesied as I was commanded life came to the bones and the Bible says when life came to the bones flesh came upon the bones bone to his bone there are family members that need to go back and sit down right now and say listen we need to put a system and a structure in this house are we together we can't have five children one is saying good morning one is saying how far one is saying what is your business there has to be a structure The mother cannot be responsible and the father is irresponsible, does not care. No, there has to be a structure and a system. Are we together? Who pays the school fees of the children? Who is the one paying and who is helping? Let it be defined. Let your wife not be paying the school fees and then you say, hey, after all, you are doing it. The most important thing is that we are one. What is the job description in this house? If she's paying the school fees effortlessly, you must be ready to cook sometimes too, effortlessly. 
Sorry. Structure. I challenge the men in this ministry. You know what your mandate is. Don't be irresponsible. This is not an irresponsible ministry. Stand to your mandate. Take care of your families. Don't sit down and cross your leg and follow these things unbelievers do. And punish the woman just because she said yes to you. No. Let there be discipline. Every man here should get up. It's your responsibility by God as far as the context of family is concerned to make sure that your children eat. I know that things may not be. I don't have money. Have relationships then. I've taught you that relationships are currencies too. If you don't have money, respect those who have it and honor and serve your way to their life so that you can enjoy the leverage. But where you don't have resources and you are arrogant again, you are designing failure. How about spirituality? Please let me challenge you. Take this issue of your spiritual life seriously. When you get up, pray. Okay, in this family, some of you may need to go online, download Bible study plan or scripture reading plan or a devotional that, is, that suits you, that is comprehensive. What is the system in place for your prayer? As a man of God, is there a system for the prayer of your ministry? Is there a system for the people to learn God's word? Is there a principle, a, a, a system for them to be trained to know? Don't assume that just because you are sincere, the system will work. You have to bring people together and teach them. Nobody within your care should outgrow the need to be mentored and helped. Anybody who outgrows your mentorship has outgrown being around your space too. Are you ready to pray in one minute please no movement around you are going to cry to God from the depth of your heart Lord I'm ready to step up to a life and a Christian experience that produces results indeed I am tired of shadow boxing my life up today down today tomorrow spiritually financially and otherwise you have taught me tonight the power of systems and structures no wonder the bones in my destiny have not come back to become a great army because the bone has refused to come to its bone i take responsibility for my state right now and i obtain grace someone open your mouth and begin to pray please pray from the depth of your heart outside pray all the overflows pray following by way of television praying or online pray make sure you are praying we're wrapping up talk to jesus my life needs to shine forth this is the season of strange results it's my season of marvelous light lord you have brought me light i need to systematize my results systematize my spiritual growth systematize my mental development systematize my approach to life approach to learning my business my organization the ministry you've committed to my hands you are there to help me but i obtain grace to put systems and structures leadership structures a modus operandi that is derived from scripture that will produce consistency of results a code of conduct and a code of operation pray a code of conduct and a code of operation a system that is derived from scripture that governs how i behave and respond to life a system derived from scripture that governs how i do the things i do that my actions become predictable now unto the lamb upon the throne we raise a sound we raise a sound for he is God and God alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more time. Now unto the Lamb upon the throne. We raise a sound. 
speak over your life now and I want you to receive it with your heart not just by the lifting of hands but from the depth of your spirit listen disorganization is related to lack there were 5,000 people randomly arranged in that crusade ground but when it was time for feeding Jesus says before bread comes let them sit down arrange everybody let there be order structure it so that the distribution will be well can you imagine that even with that order there were still 12 baskets imagine what would have been wasted in the disorder i've been to redemption camp i've been to mfm camp i've been to almost if not all the major campgrounds by the grace of god sometimes i look at these magnificent ministries and these campgrounds and I wonder, what system did they create to manage people like this? Do you know what it takes to manage people like that? How do you sit down and know that over 30,000 branches, 20,000 branches, 10,000 branches are healthy and you are in one place? And the Holy Spirit told me, God is still seated on the throne. And yet every Christian, he has not had to come to the earth to follow compliance even in heaven when Lucifer rebelled it was the system that fought him God already put a system God never had to stand up from the throne and say ah who is threatening my stay there was already an allocation of responsibilities the Bible never said God fought he said Michael he didn't say any angel there was an angel allocated to make sure justice. God is the one who sits upon a throne made up of righteousness and justice. But because of system, even in heaven today, you don't find people run into the throne room just to bow. There is order and there is system. There is what must be said before they say, what is the lamb? Heaven without evil still has doors and gates, say systems. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he told the people, let them sit down. And when they sat down, he carried five loaves, two fish, he blessed it. He said, now go to the system that is already organized and begin to prosper them. Listen, the testimonies that will come out from this, because many of you, you see, this is what the devil has been fighting this is why your christian experience does not look exciting because you are up today with zeal and passion and then you go down sometimes painfully then you start again but my bible says the path of the just should be as a shining light that shines ever brighter go and write out every area that is not working in your life or the area that is epileptic in its result you will check there and find out that a system and a structure is what is missing. Maybe not lack of character. Maybe not sincerity of heart. Some of you, there are friends that are long overdue to get out of your life. Wrong associations, most of them are unbelievers. But because you have not created a system in your life, there is no legitimacy to say no. They are your classmates, they are your friends, they are your tribes people. When you create a system, let the system do the fighting. Are we together you're going to pray one last prayer you're going to ask the Lord to visit that area in your life where your results need to be predictable in your Christian experience that one area go ahead and pray you're about to receive something to cap up this series you have learned about the spirituality of life 
you have learned about the fact that the realm of the spirit controls this realm you have learned the various laws that make for dominion now the lord has brought us into this understanding of systems and structures bone to his bone hallelujah hallelujah when joseph was living a prophecy as prime minister he gave them a word he said someday the lord is going to bring you an exodus out of this land and he says make sure as you are going carry my bones with you do you know what he was saying do not forget the structure do not forget the formula that made you to excel even in a strange land as you leave this land carry that understanding with you not just a physical skeleton alone carry that understanding if it worked for you in in uh, egypt it will work for you any other place every organization runs by systems and structures there is no luck when the results become sustainable you can have short-term results that is purely by luck man of god it's time for the ministry to rise i don't doubt your call you are anointed you are a prophet you are an apostle you are a pastor you are an evangelist but the problem is the system businessman with what you carry you should be relating with the kings in that industry but lack of system has brought you down it's time to go back and reorder your life let me be able to know that every day you pray every day you study scripture let me be able to know that you have predefined times when you fast you don't have to announce it and tell everybody there are times that there can be corporate fast but when is your own personal one let me be able to know the times that you can go for a retreat alone what is the system in your life when there is an attack what is the system in your life when something good happens to celebrate you must go back and give your life that level of meticulous definition and I pray for you in the name of Jesus that whilst you are focused doing that may the grace of God work for you may the mercy of God speak on your behalf in the name of Jesus Christ anywhere you have not gotten sustainable results by reason of this series in the name of Jesus the power to begin to command results receive it in the name of Jesus Christ and hear me anything that should have been released in your life but was withheld whether by demonic forces or it was a deliberate act of god to help you so you do not lose it when it comes i declare that now that you know these things may the mercy of god release it to you now there will be no wastage in your life from today no spiritual wastage no financial wastage no relational wastage no mental wastage no depleting of your health in the name of jesus christ and hear me for those of you who have who are now experiencing any kind of depletion or any kind of trouble that came directly because you did not understand systems and structures whether you are owing financially or maybe your health has deteriorated as a result of this or your relationships have plunged into misery or something is wrong with your spiritual life the same way the hair of Samson grew back by the mercy of God I decree and declare that his mercy speaks to that issue now everything dead or dying in your life by this proclamation it jacks back to life now but like i always say there are two areas that are my main focus number one is your spiritual life number two is your finances let me speak over both in the name of jesus that the least among us here may you be as great as david that the least among us globally the global koinonia family may the least among us by grace be as great as david and even for the body of christ in the name of jesus christ may god begin to mature the saints across denominations across regions across nations in the name of jesus christ then i pray for your finances 
that when men say there is a casting down for you i decree and declare by the power of prophecy may you say there is a lifting up i want you to believe there is a grace for what i'm telling you i'm saying it again in the name of jesus anyone here who is in need of financial breakthroughs because of seasons in your life that you're in i stand by the god who has shown mercy that in the name of jesus may those doors be open speedily open speedily open speedily may my god touch the heart of men to bring treasures and blessings to you and let me pray over you whatever it is that you do the work that you do whether ministry your career business whatever it is in the name of jesus i empower it to begin to produce results in the name of jesus christ thank you heavenly father in jesus name i pray just a minute or two you can go ahead and celebrate jesus i want to make the altar call right now hallelujah everything happens in this kingdom because god designed a system seed time and harvest impartation spiritual growth and now salvation let's minimize movement as i make this altar call it is always my joy and delight to give people an opportunity who need jesus sincerely and desperately in their life the bible says the lord added daily to them as many as should be saved every time god's people come there are always those who are to be saved there are people here in this auditorium and all the overflows following by way of television and the internet you are saying apostle thank you so much i desire to begin this experience with god but i need the salvation of my soul or you are here you are saying apostle i love jesus but my life has gone haywire and i need restoration please make sure that you are not ashamed to say anyone is looking at me this is between you and the god of heaven wherever you are we have just one minute for you i want you to leave your seat right now and come and stand here everyone god bless you people are coming take that bold step and come to jesus god bless you as you come make sure you win that war you are rededicating your life to jesus you are making that decision god bless you they are coming are you celebrating them all the other the overflows you follow suit come to jesus he's able to give you a new beginning you can start afresh again apostle i want to come but i'm not sure i remember giving my heart to jesus but things have gone haywire can i join them you are most welcome very quickly join them he's able to save even to the uttermost he will give you a new beginning hallelujah young and old keep coming hallelujah if you're joining them please hurry up i want to pray now thank you so much for all of you who have come to make this decision the bible says as many as would come to him he will in no wise despise thank you for the courage to make this glorious decision jesus said if you reject me before men or deny me before men that i would deny you before my father here's a chance for you to start afresh with jesus even if not anew he gives you room to start afresh thank you so much for coming i want you to lift your right hand if you will all of you who are here and those who are connecting by way of television and internet you can pray the same prayer the power of god is there to ensure that you become recipients of this glorious life say lord jesus say it again convincingly say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i make jesus savior of my soul lord of my life and my king i declare that the power of sin of satan of hell and the grave is broken over my life i receive eternal life into my spirit 
I receive the abundance of grace, even the gift of righteousness, and I declare that I reign in life. I go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you so much for these ones. You have brought them to Jesus, and I pray by the authority of Scripture that their sins are forgiven. I also declare upon you that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. I declare that by the authority of Scripture, you are recipients of the life of God. And from today and forever, you go forward ever and backward never. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. May you be established and grounded in righteousness. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you so very much. May I request that you move to my right, which is your left. You have the counselors waving their hands to you. They'll have a word with you and then you'll be back to your seat. Let's celebrate them, Koinonia. Thank you so very much. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye